our reading um, comes from Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 26. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So good morning everyone. We're going to look at this passage together and the actual theme of today's sermon is growing in the spirit. So first of all, I know when I read that um, passage and look at what they call the acts of the flesh and it says they're obvious but some of the words I don't really understand and I'm sure I'm not the only one in here that feels a bit like that. So I actually found another list, which is written in a different version of the Bible. I'm just going to read to you. So it says, the behavior of what they call the self-life is obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way, senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions, being envious of the blessings of others, murder, uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behavior it seems to be an endless list because they both talk about and the other things that are similar. And that is what is called the um, acts of the flesh, which when we're born into this human world, we're all open to. If we think about the world around, we think about maybe our lives in the past, we can honestly say, yes, we've committed those things. But maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, I still do some of those. I still get angry. I can still get a bit envious of people sometimes. And yet I've been a Christian a long time. So how does it all fit in? Well, when we become a Christian, when we give our lives to Jesus and say, I want you to take control of my life and we invite the Holy Spirit in, we then are in almost a battle because this, when we ask the Holy Spirit, he will help us to not do those wrong things. If we don't ask him and we continue to live doing those wrong things, arguing, um, blasphemy, any of the other things that I read out there, we will keep doing them. We may feel guilty. We probably will feel guilty. But unless we ask for help from God, from the Holy Spirit, we, you know, I'm sure you know, you keep doing it. 
even, even lying. Sometimes lying can become such a habit that we do it without even realizing, and it's only afterwards we think, oh, that wasn't actually the truth I just told. Well, how does being a Christian actually help us to get over these things? Well, the second part of the reading that Liz read for us is about the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm sure you've heard far more talk about the fruit of the Spirit than about all those acts of the flesh. The fruit of the Spirit, and it is a fruit, is when we become a Christian and we open ourselves up to God and the Holy Spirit, the fruit is in our body, it's in our being. But we have to let it grow. We can't just say, God, I just fancy having the love and you know, I'm not so worried about all the rest at the moment. They're all there, it's all part of one fruit. And so as we go along through our Christian life, we will see if we're relying on God's Holy Spirit, that those gifts, uh, sorry, those fruit will start to appear in different ways. Sometimes they might become clear really quickly when we become a Christian or in a particular situation. We might, for instance, be in talking to somebody and just feel a real sense of love for them. We may have a real peace in different situations which normally would be freaking us out. That is peace that comes from God. It's part of the fruit. And as we go through our Christian life, that fruit will grow and grow and grow. And it will never stop growing. And the only time it will be perfect in our lives is that day when we step from earth and into heaven, into God's presence. So every single one of us, whether we've been a Christian, well, maybe we're not a Christian yet, but if we become a Christian yesterday, even today, or whether it was 50 years ago, 70 years ago, it doesn't matter. We're all on that journey of growing and experiencing the fruit of the Spirit. And the more the fruit of the Spirit becomes evident in our lives, the less those other things, the um, acts of the flesh, will become less obvious. We're always going to find them in our life, but the balance is going to change so that the fruit of the Spirit will become much stronger than the acts of the flesh. And as I say, the day we step into eternity, when we die, the acts of the flesh are gone. Although when we were born, the acts of the flesh were, the, were there. It switches over the minute we step into heaven. So how do we actually, in practice, get to change? How do we rely and grow in the Holy Spirit? Well, I know there's been things in my life, things that I've um, worried about, things that I used to be, have temper tantrums, even probably when I was seven or eight. You might find it hard to believe that, but I did. And I used to be prone to them quite a bit in my family. I never, ever did it at school or outside the house, always in the family. And I was known in my family, if anyone's going to have a temper tantrum, it's going to be Gillian. I was the youngest, and I was easily annoyed by my sister, or sometimes my mum and dad, and that temper tantrum would come along. I remember one day we had a guest to Sunday tea, and the day before, no, actually that morning, I had had a tantrum, and my dad, I love him, loved him dearly, I still love him, even though he's not with us anymore, he had recorded me having that tantrum. Why? I do not know, but he did. And then, at that Sunday tea time, he played the recording back. I think he thought I'd got over it. I hadn't. I was still, it just was like a red rag to a ball. And that tantrum just erupted again in me. And at that stage, I'd actually been a Christian a couple of years, but I don't think it was having much of an impact. My faith wasn't having much of an impact on my behavior and my anger. And my temper, being angry, carried on probably 
until I was late into my teens. And then, through trusting in God, and I started to learn more about the Holy Spirit when I left home and went to a church as a student, I I started discovering the Holy Spirit. My church at home, the Holy Spirit was only in the Bible, so I didn't really understand his impact in my life. But then I went to a church where the Holy Spirit, they talked about he's here with us and he can change things. And I was just thinking, wow, this, is, this looks amazing. And I was like a sponge, soaking it, everything up I could learn about the Holy Spirit. And then these things like my temper and my anger and other things that I was experiencing up to that point in my life, they started to disappear. And I started to experience that love and that peace and have done ever since that day. And that, I started at that church in 1979, so quite a while ago. And since then, I've been growing more and more and learning more and more about growing in the Holy Spirit. Now, if we think of the width of this stage here as being my lifespan, I'm probably still quite a long way over here in my grow, growing in the Holy Spirit, if that's eternity over there. I don't know how many more years I've got on earth, but I know that the day I do die and I get to this side of the stage, that's when perfection comes. But in the meantime, as I get nearer to that, those other things gradually will go. But they, have to, they will go when I work with God, work with the Holy Spirit on dealing with things. When the um, war in Ukraine started and they started talking about um, nuclear attacks and things like that, my first reaction was real fear and, you know, not knowing quite what to do with myself with it and then I read a verse in the Bible that said don't give in to fear and I this is how I dealt with it and it can apply to lots of these other things I prayed and said I've just read this verse that says don't let fear overtake over consume you I can't remember the exact wording and you know from that day on whenever I hear the news about that it doesn't cause any panic in me Yet to go back in time on a similar thing, when um, the war in Iraq first started, I remember I was so, so scared by the whole thing. I phoned my mum and said, Mum, I'm really scared. What am I going to do? And that showed the growth I'd come on from that point. But now, whatever may happen in that area, I have that peace which comes from God. And if we actually look at those um, acts of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit, they sort of match each other up. So something that you may be experiencing as an act of the flesh has an answer in the fruit of the spirit. They're not two totally separate lists. They have a connection. Like the fruit of the spirit is the answer to those things. Now, being filled with the Holy Spirit is our choice. Jesus said, we just need to ask and we will be filled. And in the asking, we are surrendering our wills to God's will. And then the Holy Spirit takes us down a path that will end in ultimate love and joy and peace and a much, much, much closer relationship with God. I found this quote, which I thought was really lovely, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Love is the key. Joy is love singing. Peace is love resting. Long-suffering is love enduring. Kindness is love's touch. Goodness is love's character. Faithfulness is love's habit. Gentleness is love's self-forgetfulness. 
self-control is love holding the reins. I thought that was a really lovely quote about how love interweaves with all those other fruit. And as I said before, those characteristics directly counter every one of the works of the flesh. And God's desire is that every one of those characteristics become characteristics in our lives. Somebody once said, you, those qualities, the fruit of the Spirit, are a package deal. You can't pick and choose which ones you want, like you might pick fruit in the green, greengrocers. And God wants and expects these characteristics to be present in our lives. So in order to reach that position where we are more and more full of growing in the fruit of the Spirit, we need to get our hearts and minds set on what the Holy Spirit desires. And how do we find out what that is? Well, we read our Bibles and meditate on what the... Bible says. We spend time with God, listening to him, sharing with him how we're feeling and listening to his response. We can talk with a close friend, say, this is where I'm at with God. Where are you at? Can we help each other along the road? If we just go through our days without spending that time, our progress is going to be really, really slow. If we invest in our time in getting to know God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit better and in a deeper way, then we're going to see that change come about. Now, growing in the Spirit, having a life in the Spirit, there's four things that we are told to do. Firstly, walk by the Spirit. Secondly, be led by the Spirit. Third, live by the Spirit. And fourth, keep in step with the Spirit. So walk by the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, live by the Spirit, and keep in step with the Spirit. The, when, they were first when it was written, they were all written as verbs that were in the present tense, an active verb, and something that you don't just do it once. They're active day by day, minute by minute. That's what God is wanting us to do. So as I've said, the Holy Spirit produces a, a package of good things we all have access to if we walk in step with him. And the fruit of the Spirit is a character sketch of the person of Jesus. So if you're the sort of person that finds it easier to learn Jesus' characteristics rather than think, you know, what's the Holy Spirit like, what's God's like, looking at the person of Jesus, you can see Jesus manifested all of those things in his life. And there's no limit to how much of the Holy Spirit we can have. And the more we... Um, learn and enjoy being with the Holy Spirit, the more we're going to become like Jesus and see what true and redeemed humanity can look like. So we can remember what is our gift through the gospel, the good news of Jesus, that we belong to Jesus if we've come to him in faith. We have to have that faith in Jesus for this to take place. And that those who belong to Jesus have got the Holy Spirit and can have victory over those acts of the flesh. It might not be an easy victory, but we have that victory and we need not to give up. And a lot of them are related to how we treat each other. If you think back through that list... There's a lot of it that affects two or more people at the same time. Whereas if we're becoming more like Jesus, Jesus was never like that with anybody. And I'm sure deep down you may feel, I don't want to be like that with anybody either. 
if the band could come up, please. I'm just going to finish. I'll finish with a prayer in a moment, but I just want to read a story that I came across while the band are getting themselves set up. So this story is, t- is told of an evangelist who was preaching on an unnamed Native American reservation. As he was walking down the street, he met one of his recent converts who had had a reputation as the reservation drunk, tough guy, and womanizer. When the preacher inquired how the new Christian was doing, the guy replied, I don't know, it's like there's a big dog fight going on in my head. My old bad dog there that wants me to go back to the bars is fighting with this new good dog that wants me to go to church, love my wife, and tell others about Christ. The evangelist smiled and asked, which one is winning? And the guy replied, well, I guess the one I feed the most. In each one of us, there is a battle going on between the flesh, the bad dog, and the spirit, the good dog. To be victorious in the daily battle, we must starve the bad dog, feed the good dog, and not quit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you want us to become more and more like you. And you show us in your word how we can do that. And you don't leave us to try and work that out on our own. But you've given us the Holy Spirit to help us and to change us and to lead us through every step of our lives. And I pray that um, anyone in this place that's not really learned to um, spend time with your Holy Spirit and to learn from you and to hear from you that you would show each one of us how we can do that so that we can move on in victory over the sins of the flesh and see more of you in our lives that we may become closer and closer to that that victory of the sins that we know we still commit just pray that your spirit right now would come and for some begin that work and for others take that work on further with you today and I ask this in the name of Jesus Amen